thank you all for staying here. I know it's a, a long time to wait. So, uh, you know, all of you, you work so hard for your money to put food on the table. And I work every day for you to protect that dollar, to make sure that, that you get the full value of it and to stop worthless or unexpected or ridiculous taxes that you have to pay. Uh, I know some of you know a lot about me. I'm a nurse, I'm an attorney, I have a business degree and my psychology degree. As an RM, I know and appreciate life. And I've been endorsed by the Right to Life Society, and locally and the state. So uh, you, you know, all know, well, I don't know if all of you know, but I believe life begins at conception. And yes, as a nurse, I understand the need for medical care, good medical care. But we also need a free market. And we also need competition. I don't know if any of you know about surprise billing, you know, but uh, you know, this is like when you get the bill from the hospital and, and you are shocked when you thought it was going to be this, this amount and it's way this amount. I know my husband was in the hospital for two days. He had got a bill for $7,000 for medicine. We don't know what that medicine could possibly be. As a businesswoman, I owned and operated a bicycle shop and a bakery. And I surely know firsthand how awful government intrusion can be. We still get letters from workers' comp. You know, we still get things. This is, what, seven years ago that we had it? So, also, talk about government intrusion, e-check. Uh, how many of you hate e-check? <laughs> <laughs> you know so many of us. Uh, uh, so, so many of you probably know, with the help of, of Skip and uh, Mr. McNeil, that we passed the bill to stop e-check on the House floor. <laughs> I've had the privilege and the honor of being your judge, your appellate judge, for 18 years. I've written uh, and, and sat on the Supreme Court nine times. I've written over 500 opinions that were published. I've served in the State House eight years before I was a judge. I'm known as a very strong conservative. I was part of the Caveman Caucus. Now, I'm not a Neanderthal, but, but I'm certainly strongly conservative. I'm very pro-Second Amendment, and I've been endorsed by the Buckeye Institute and will be endorsed by the NRA. And probably some of you know already that I have the bill for sanctuary cities, so they cannot do in Virginia what they did in Virginia in Ohio. So to prove you about that. I believe we need to put God back in the schools, restore our moral and family values, fix school funding. We're on our way. We've done a really good job the last few months. Uh, get rid of government waste, S lower property taxes, and stop all this unnecessary government regulation. I work every day on your behalf. I'm a conservative and I'm proud of it. I will never betray your trust. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> I have a lot of psychiatric training. Right. Yes. I was just wondering how soon will that e-check thing come into effect because we're going to have to get rid of our van that we love. <laughs> it's going over to the Senate. We need so. a lot of prayer. Yes, we need a lot of prayers. But we'll be fighting for it. I need all of you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, have a seat right there. Frank? Welcome. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for uh, coming out and participating in this. Um, I had the fortunate uh, blessing of growing up during Ronald Reagan's administration. And um, I saw the fall of communism uh, in Eastern Europe and in Soviet Union. Uh, I saw President Reagan uh, rebuild our military uh, to the greatest fighting force this world's ever seen. Uh, I've seen him unleash the entrepreneur spirit that continues to today. And um, that's not what's going on today with the Democratic Socialist Party. Our high schools and our colleges are under attack. Uh, our children's ideas of being taught about universal everything uh, needs to stop. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we didn't build a business or, or wealth. Uh, we built a family. And we have nine beautiful adopted children. Uh, that is a tremendous blessing to me. If, if you go by how the Democratic Socialist Party thinks, uh, they should have been murdered uh, before they were born and throw them away. Uh, but my wife and I saw fit uh, to rescue them and make them part of our family. Um, the ideas that we, that we talk about with them are important because they're not taught a lot in our country anymore. I remember a few years ago that we took our children to Arlington National Cemetery and we walked the rolling hills of Arlington National Cemetery and I talked about how freedom was bought by these men and women on these tombstones. I talked to them about the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and how important uh, that is. Do you know what's going on right now at the Arlington National Cemetery? There's a woman or a young man walking 21 paces that way and 21 paces this way and saying, not on my watch. I'm not going to abandon my brother, I'm not going to abandon my post, no matter how bad the weather, no matter how bad the hurricane or the blizzard. And that's what's proud uh, about our, 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 our country, that we need to pass it on. Ronald Reagan said this about our children. He said, freedom is only a generation away from extinction. We don't pass our freedoms on to our children through their bloodstream. It's passed on through ideas. It's passed on through, through our sacrifice and, and, and through uh, our ability to fight for them. And someday they're going to have to do that. And that's what we need to do and, and, and to teach our children those ideas. I believe in, in, and I'm a Reagan guy, right? So I believe in small government. What would, I, what would you think about if I told you since 2008, the state of Ohio, the Congress, or, or legislature and governor has taken away $2 billion from local government? Now, to me, the most important government is done at the county level, at the trustee level, at the villages, where safety ser services are provided, the sheriff's office, the police department, uh, EMS, and fire. We need to take that money and bring it back. The rainy day fund, well, it's full. It's at 2.3 or 2.4% full. Uh, the cap is 2.5. We need to take that money that's been going there, bring it back to our communities so we can lower taxes and help out our, our, our struggling townships and, and, and villages. There's not a bill that will come across my desk as far as right to life goes that I won't support. I believe that life is uh, uh, at conception. Uh, I believe it needs to be protected. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe that it needs to be protected. I've been across this country uh, with the Coach Hall Foundation fighting for schools, fighting for children, fighting for mental health, fighting for a recovery. And I'm telling you now, I've been in rooms where people will have fought me tooth and nail on the Second Amendment and say, talking about free, gun-free zones. And I'm telling you right now, the only way you stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. <laughs> Guys, again, thank you so much for coming out. Um, you, you know, I, like I said, I was blessed to grow up in, in, in the Reagan era. And, um, uh, you know, he, he, I'm what he calls a citizen politician. First time running for office. And uh, I really want to go and just be a servant to you guys and government. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do we have any questions? Hi, my name is Kathy Johnson. Hi, Kathy. I would just like to ask you, 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 you made a very nice speech here, and I would say that you're a patriot and that you would share my values. Yes. But do you have particular experience? The House of Representatives in Ohio is a legislative body. Do you have particular experience that would qualify you for this position? I would tell you that my experience is that of our current president, Donald Trump. Never been elected to office, never done 
uh, been a councilman or any of this. Uh, he just believed in our country. He just believed that America needed help and wanted to come back and, and, and pass that on to our children. That's why I believe. I go to Congress or I go to the State House. Um, you know, it's not my job to uh, write out a bill so it's in legal form and so it's ready for the revised code. We come up with ideas. Uh, we talk to people across the state, uh, like Hospital 13 or uh, Hospital 318 that we passed to the Coach Hall Foundation. We got hundreds of people together, put them in a room, PTO, uh, Sheriff's Association, uh, Chief, Chief of Police, you name it. We got them in a room. We came out with an idea of what we wanted in the bill, what SROs should do, what SROs are trained to do. We took that idea and we took it to the legislative uh, uh, um, law office or, or offices and they wrote the bill out correctly how it needs to be in the Ohio Revised Code. So it's not about so much legal terms and all this. Uh, it's about the ideas of you, the people, uh, that we're supposed to go and protect. Next question. Hi, friend. How are you doing, Skip? Skip Claypool. Um, you seem like a really nice guy. Yep, I appreciate and, that. And I'd love to have you, you know, I'd really like to, uh, uh, to uh, enjoy having a glass of wine with you, that kind of stuff. But I did not hear from you what you're running for and and how you're differentiated from Diane. I mean, Diane gave all of her credentials. This is why she's qualified to be in the state house and so on and so forth. I didn't hear you say what you would do differently, why you're better qualified, what you do b better, why people should vote for you. That's a great question. Um, no, well, he's only got two minutes. So I'm say my 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 uh, my experience comes from my life I've led, um, and, and we can talk more about my life I led. Uh, about 10 years ago, we adopted a young man who's 14 years old. If you ever want to turn your life upside down, adopt a teenager because they'll do it for you. Um, he lost the battle to addiction. Um, and he spent years in prison because uh, he couldn't fight the battle. Um, but I'm here to tell you right now uh, that my wife and I never gave up, that we sought out treatment, we sought out whatever we had to do to help him, and there's nothing more powerful, Skip, than a praying mother for her child. I stand here today, he's 24 months sober. No drugs in the system. He has his own job, his own car, his own apartment. I'm going to take real life experiences to Columbus, and I'm going to fight for you guys. I'm going to talk to you guys. I'm going to have office hours in the district so I can reach out to you and let you know what, 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 what want to know what you're thinking. So that's how I'm going to do, I'm going to do that, Skip. Thanks for a great question. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Just one question. I understand that you were in the school during the shooting at Chardon. Yes, sir. What was on your mind when you did what you did? Um, you, you know, not a whole lot. I just reacted. He was hurting our kids, and I just wanted to get him out of there uh, as fast as I could because um, yeah, he was hurting our children. And um, uh, 47 seconds, that's how long from the first shot until I chased him out of the back door. Uh, that's what the Coach Hall Foundation is about. It's about putting good guys with guns in schools uh, protect our kids from bad guys with guns. Um, but yeah, you, you know, um, I was blessed to raise in a great family, a home, um, my, a, a Christian family home that taught me about values and everything. And so when that moment occurred, I just reacted to what, what the good Lord gave me and, and pursued. So. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Let's see if she can say it loud enough. Okay, Mr. Hall, you were an educator. Okay, what was your specialty or what is your specialty within Sheridan Schools? Tell us tell us your educational function. Um, I'm, I'm a tutor at Chardon um, uh, and a football coach. Uh, so basically I get the toughest of the toughest. Um, no, there's a a kid that's having an issue, um, you know, they usually bring it to me and we talk it out and we talk about uh, how to get to a better place, uh, to talk about uh, all the uh, uh, um, opportunities you have. If you take a cell phone, um, think about how great of a country we live in with that cell phone. And I just had a conversation with a kid the other day. That cell phone, you can, you can apply to Harvard University. You can apply uh, uh, for special, uh, uh, for grants and scholarships. You can apply for uh, uh, financial aid. All on that phone. Our kids have incredible opportunities. We just need to make sure that they're educated about those opportunities and that they have the willpower 
to step up and take those opportunities that so many of us, like you guys, have fought for and defended for and that you're living your life for. So thank you guys, and I appreciate it. So. Okay. Frank, you can just grab a seat. Yep. So, Diane, you have uh, one minute for either a question or a rebuttal. Okay, when I came down there and why uh, I was voted in unanimously, because on a, every year now, we are losing because of term limits. Like this year alone, losing 18 state representatives. Last year, the same thing, and the year before that. They have so many new people coming in. When I first started, it was, I was being taught by the different people. Now, I am teaching the people. When I walked into the uh, medical committee, they stood up and applauded me because they need somebody with the medical background. Same thing for the judiciary committees. You have to have some background, let alone how a bill gets passed and, and to go through the process. You have to be able to do that. You have to have that background. And the seniors, you know, and the Alzheimer's. I mean, so many of these things are all tied together. Thank you. I think that's for a question or a rebuttal? Um, I would say this, that uh, the, the Ohio Constitution was changed some years back uh, because the people didn't want uh, uh, career politicians. They wanted what the founding fathers wanted. And that was the everyday normal citizen step up and work for the government. So the government is by the people, for the people. You understand? That's what term limits are about. And I would say this. I would say that our national government, our federal government, our congressmen and senators need to have term limits. Yes. So that's what I would say. To have the privilege of having the job of making the road safe, you know, that, that's rewarding for me. Uh, getting through a storm and seeing the final product of, of what you've done. It's something I take pride in and uh, because of it being a challenge, it's something I, I enjoy doing.